Hayek made a very sensible remark when he said, I don't think there are any laws in economics. There are only patterns, and we have to learn to recognize the patterns. And I think that's exactly right. Our job is really to try and pick up the sort of trends and patterns that are happening, but not to say, I'm going to analyze the situation and tell you where it's going, just to try and watch it, and with some luck, guide it a bit. Alan Kerman, I come from now from the École de Hautes Études en Sciences Sociales in Paris, but for many years I was in Aix-en-Provence where I set up a research group in economics, but which became too conventional, so I ran away to Paris. The representative agent, as you know, is a person who in some sense represents the population in the sense that his choices, his actions, can be thought of as typical or as summing up everything that the population is doing. Unfortunately, for many reasons, you cannot do that in a system like the economic system. So it's true in many physical and biological systems too. What happens at the top is not, in some sense, what happens to the average particle at the bottom. In an ant's nest, you don't want to look at the typical ant to find out how the ant's nest is organized and working. What you really want to know is, uh, are these new developments, in some sense, undermining the idea that we should start from the individual and then move up? What we need to know is how these individuals not only act in their own interests and so forth, but also how they interact. And it's the latter part that's important because macroeconomics, uh, macroeconomic behavior, emerges from this interaction. And that's the big difference between studying an individual and then claiming that the whole thing will act like the individual. And behavioral economics tells us that people are more complicated than uh, we used to think. But still, for most people, they believe that, well, there are biases and so forth, but underlying is this rational person. Pareto once said, I think people spend uh, some of their time taking non-rational decisions and the rest of their time rationalizing them. And I think that that is a, a, a clue to how people do behave. So we shouldn't try and believe that everybody has this underlying rationality and we just nudge them back to it. No, I think they don't and uh, we can't expect that of them. Our idea that after 2008, everything would be put on the table and we would re redo everything has actually not happened. The profession has a huge amount of inertia. You will hear these words like back to normal or uh, converging to a reasonable state and so forth. So the idea is that we were somehow there, not really knocked off the path, but the system will somehow come back to the path. And we're not too worried about the fact that maybe the system automatically, all the time, is generating these movements. And so we should worry about that and not worry about how it will return to normal. I think normal is a word we should really ban for economics. I think there's um, too much of a tendency to look around for something smart from psychology or from uh, physics and then say, that's a really great idea. I will reframe that in terms of the things I know how to do and then I will use that. A lot of people have used, quote, psychological insights, but they don't spend much of their time actually working with psychologists because multidisciplinary work involves learning the other person's language, working with them. And we don't see a lot of that. We do see a lot of people picking up on ideas and maybe a little bit of collaboration, but I don't think it really penetrates our discipline. I wouldn't say that our discipline is being fundamentally changed because of multidisciplinary work, and it should be, because the world is changing and we can't separate out so neatly economics from the other parts. We should be taking account of sociology, we should be taking account of anthropology, and we should be taking account of physics and biology. All of those things are important, but I don't see that really happening at the moment. If you go into any big economics meeting and you ask yourself, am I really now seeing something innovative, something new? What you'll find is that people, first of all, they want to impress you. They want to impress you with how technically competent they are. Then they tell you the story about what they're doing. But what they should be doing is tell you the story about what they're doing and then say, why do I need these techniques to do it? And I think we've, we haven't got to that. And that's probably our fault because we um, promote young people 
on the articles that they publish. But where do they publish the articles? They publish articles in journals who are edited by the guys who have a huge investment in human capital in the old way of looking at things. So I think it's very difficult to make a breakthrough. There are interesting breakthroughs. But typically, if you look at networks, networks are really important and we understand that. But what do people say? Network analysis, really important, very interesting, but it's not incorporated into for example, standard macroeconomics. And it should be, because networks can produce collapses. And Andy Haldane, the chief economist at the Bank of England, has spent a lot of time explaining that. And he did genuinely interdisciplinary work with Bob May, an ecologist. So it is possible, and I think it gave real insights into why networks can cause collapses. Those sort of insights are really important, but I, I still don't see enough of that to make me think, oh, wow, economics is finally changing. You know? If we really wanted to change economics, I think people, first of all, would have to get rid of a certain number of, let's say, basic ideas. For example, equilibrium, as we know it, is, I think, a handicap for us because we're always looking for convergence to an equilibrium. And that, of course, is an inheritance from Valras. But what we're in is a system which there are lots of interactions, feedbacks, and so forth. You don't have a system which is in equilibrium in any normal sense. What it is doing is evolving, changing all the time. And we shouldn't be thinking of it as a system which is somehow coming to an equilibrium, first thing. Second thing, people still somehow seem to have the idea that many things are reversible. And in that sort of situation, open-ended, evolving, things are not reversible. And so, for example, Brexit. People, what do people say? We want to get back to where we were before. But you can't turn the clock back. You know, things have changed, and the whole system is now different from how it was. And that's the sort of world we live in. I work with the, as a, quote, senior counselor to the uh, New Approaches to Economic Challenges program at the OECD. It's a fascinating exercise because you have, on the one hand, all the economists well-trained, they're picked because they're well-trained, and you have, on the other hand, the people who represent the countries, who take this stuff back and tell their political masters what they should be doing. And I think the real problem is that people, A, want something which is pretty much immediately applicable. And what do we show them in uh, Nike? We show them different ways of thinking of the system as an evolutionary adaptive system. And then they say, how do is that uh, enable us to make policy in the next couple of years? And you say to them, well, if you think of the system like that, then you may begin to think that you can't write down something and say, this will happen. You have to say, well, we're going to try this. And I think a wonderful example of how we should behave was Janet Yellen. And people got very frustrated because she wouldn't tell you what she was going to do next. She would say, well, we're going to watch and see what happens and then we're going to react. And I think that's exactly how we have to behave. But we show all these new developments, agent-based modeling, graph theory, and we explain to people how you can uh, model them. And the younger economists are really interested and in catching on. But people who've been there for a long time writing reports on Sri Lanka or some other country, they really don't want to know. They want to go back to their office and carry on writing about Sri Lanka and so forth. So. It's an interesting game, and I think that the OECD has taken a very courageous uh, stance to actually push this sort of thing. And it's working well in the sense that many people now come and participate. They used to come and listen. It was like going to the cinema, you know, go and hear this interesting seminar, and then we go home and do our work. So I think the ideas are changing. They're, they're permeating the OECD. It'll take time. But maybe change is more likely to happen there than it is in academia. Because in academia, the system is so closed, it's so much of a tribe, a church, that uh, it's more difficult to change there than it is in an or international organization like the OECD. If I was faced with a student who said, I'm going into economics, I would say to him, try not to get discouraged early on. Because what you will be told is, this is the way our models are, and this is the way you have to learn about it. And then he says, an intelligent student, but that's nothing like the world that I see. It's nothing like the world I see. I wanted to know about other things. So you should not get discouraged by the fact that you're told, well, after a couple of years of careful teaching of techniques, you will be able to do this. Because the students who get chased away by that are exactly the students that we would like to keep. Because intelligent, open-minded students 
run away because they're told they've got to learn the techniques. And so you wind up with a bunch of guys who learn the techniques. And I would say to them, there are many interesting problems in economics and don't hesitate to ask questions, to challenge the people who are teaching you and say, you know, is this really what it's all about? 